Indeed. And thinking about starts, we're a couple days away from the new year and everybody's looking forward to their fresh start, right? And we take nothing away from the fact that the Falcons have a couple more games to play before they wrap up the 2022 season. But real talk, we're already looking ahead to 2023 and the fresh start that may or may not happen in Flowery Branch for a number of players. So we talked to you guys, kind of teed it up yesterday about doing some evaluations. And we'll kind of keep doing this throughout the rest of the season for the Falcons. But we wanted to kind of do a deep dive into the offensive side of the world for the Falcons. So Jarvis, when you look down that roster of those 11 positions on offense and you think about guys who should stay and what the case might be for the Falcons keeping them around next season, or the guys who should go, let's talk about those guys, maybe just a couple of them, who you think you can make the case for that, hey, the Falcons, they should keep that guy because those guys, because they made the case for themselves this season. You know what? The first guy that comes to mind for me is Elijah Wilkinson. And I okay. think that the only concern that I have is being able to stay on the field, right? Because sure. if you're if you're injured, I can't use you. And I hate to put it like that, mm -hmm. but you know, you, you, your availability is the best ability. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so I think that I thought he's he played solid early on in the season. He mm -hmm. was able to come back and I thought he was pretty solid his um um in his in, in his return last week so i think those are some of the, the guys that that's one guy that i think that he should come back because you know mm -hmm. he's not the greatest but i think that you got to find value when yes. when you're talking about putting together a group of five guys that mm -hmm. can play together as a unit and play well as a unit because he was like people may feel a, whatever way about how, how do you feel about elijah wilkinson they were one of the best running football teams in in the NFL mm -hmm. when he was a starter um, yeah. to start the season. So there we go. Think about that. So right. um, I think he's one. Mm -hmm. Another one I, I think that I, I would like to see come back is mm -hmm. either, and I put it like either or with, with these with these two guys because mm -hmm. I think that you don't. I don't feel like you you probably have to bring in another guy to to kind of up that ante in the mm -hmm. receiver group, right? So either Alameda Zacchaeus or Cardell Hodge. I think mm -hmm. those are two guys that I think that you probably need to take a look at and say, hey, yeah. he, these guys are solid. Mm -hmm. um, these guys are some guys that can get open. We saw yeah. them do that from time to time throughout the season because mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying, hey, they have no receivers. Oh, that's not necessarily true because you don't have Kyle Pitts right now. We know right. Drake London is going to be a solid solid option for uh, for Desmond Ritter mm -hmm. uh, going forward because they have that chemistry and that's something you want to build off of, not downgrade or degrade, <laughs> as some people are doing. But I think Alameda Zacchaeus is a guy – and or uh, Cardio Hodge, I probably skew towards Alameda as the kids. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think yeah, if they're able to work together, um, he and Ritter, that is, yes. in the off season, I think they can kind of build some 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 continuity there. Uh, and once you get that continuity, it definitely it, most of the times it's always going to transfer over the field. So those are some some of the guys that I think that hey, these are guys that hey, you know what you're going to get from them. It mm -hmm. might not be great, but. Mm -hmm. He, we're talking about putting together a team uh, yes. uh, of, of guys that together as a unit that you're going to be able to get some production out of. Indeed. And I would co-sign on Elijah Wilkinson. I think he did a solid job. And when we look out at what's going on around the league, I mean, offensive linemen are going left and right. Like teams are extending their old linemen. They're not letting them get yes. away. Even the solid ones, not necessarily those who are Pro Bowl level, but even the solid ones, because, yeah, good old linemen who are going to protect your quarterback and who are going to help give you versatility on your offense and give you a solid run game, they're very hard to find. So to your point, those numbers looked really solid when Elijah Wilkinson was there. And so you keep him there unless you can get a better one in free agency. I don't think you can. Or unless somehow miraculously you get a, an O-lineman deep, deep in the draft. And I say deep, deep because what I don't want you to do is even attempt to go after anybody in the first, second, or third rounds, not named a defensive player, the end. Oh, so yes. I agree with you on Elijah Wilkinson. And it's interesting because if you had asked me at the beginning of the season, I would have said, you mean left shark who's on the right side? Nah, let him go too. But left shark who's on the right side, he's starting to kind of lose his name as left shark. He's starting to actually be right tackle Caleb McGarry. Wow. So, yeah. If they yeah. would like to go for that, I think that he he it was a wake up call for him when they did not 
pick up his fifth year option. I think that was maybe the nudge that he needed to say, man, you cannot take it for granted that you're in this league and you're a first round and they're just automatically going to re-up you. Nah, bro, you got to earn this thing. So I think I might actually give him a nod of approval to come back in Flowery Branch. But if you think about nods of approval and who stays and who goes, because you know, this is kind of that week, Jarvis, and that time where we're starting to see head coaches, for example, that are on the hot seat being let go. That's the kind of story you'll hear about on Locked On Sports today. Is there any other head coach in the NFL who's about to get his walking papers or Jarvis. One of the biggest controversies right now, which just came out moments ago, is that the NFL is back on their investigation grind for Tua Tonga Bailoa because he's yet again in the concussion protocol. So if you want to get more on those national stories, check out Locked On Sports today because certainly they're going to give you the tea. And if you like For the Culture, then you're going to absolutely love their take of the day. You can catch them and stop by odyssey app stop by youtube stop by wherever you get your podcasts wherever you download them and check out locked on sports today now jarvis i don't know if they're paying attention to who should be let go in flowery branch but we certainly are where we say you know what thanks for your service for the 2022 season we don't need to see you up 985 again in 2023 jarvis who are you two guys you know what to be honest with you i <laughs> I'm about to, I mean, I, you made a really good case for Caleb McGarry, but here's the thing. I got to stick to my guns on this one. Stick to your guns. I got to stick to my guns on them guys that, that decide to make a case for themselves in their last year. I know how you feel about that. I, know. I, I Contract year guys, I stay away from. I don't I mind know. being wrong because here's the thing. Like, you had to get your fifth year option denied and, and, and in order for you to, to work out and come into camp in shape and try to improve, because we saw improve, uh, uh, the improvement yes, from yes. him mm -hmm. from last year to this year. Like, we know he was a, he was a, a fine um, run blocker, but he has turned into one of the better run blocking right tackles in the NFL. You know, and not not only from eyeball, but from mm -hmm. the number standpoint, the nurse. Yeah. The nurse say so as well. So I think those – but I, I just it's hard for me to for that for me to forget that, right? So I have to play hardball and I'm not necessarily saying go out here and, and go and go for, go in free agent and spend free agency and spend money because mm -hmm. there's a reason why these guys hit free agency. It's gonna be some risk involved. I yeah. think that you need to trust your scouting department and go out there and draft a guy. Yeah. If that guy's in the first round, yeah, I don't mind yeah. doing that. If that guy's in the second round, I know, I know, T, I know, flow with me, flow with flow with your boy for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you're making me rock him. Rock him. I know you're rocking. Like you got that grandma rock going on really? right now. <laughs> for those you can't see, oh, you, uh, you not on youtube you just listen to the audio version she is doing the grandma rock like she's worried because man man just got they just got that phone call man man just got locked up <laughs> she's very concerned right now but i think that you know with caleb mcgear i just it's hard for me to forget those things and i like who's to say that if you get this three four year deal very team friendly you don't get fat and happy like it happens it happens to the best of them it happened to Deion jones we saw it it happened true. to him he got true, fat and true. happy and that's okay that's fine because we know what the capabilities were when you were motivated in there and, and, and locked in and we've seen that this year with caleb i just can't i I just can't do it unless it's a one year deal, mm -hmm. like one year prove it to me again type mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. I'm staying away from that one. Also, I got to throw Demir Bird in there as well because, like I said, I talked about Cordero Hodge or yeah. Alameda yeah. Zakis. Yes. I, I need you to choose one, and then I need I need you to go out there and go get me a little scat pack wide receiver because you got some trees mm -hmm. already out there in, in Kyle Pitts and Drake London, true. you know, true, depending true. on where he lines up and everything. So I want to get a little variation there. Give me another little scat pack on wide receiver that, you know, mm -hmm. is explosive and, and maybe can take the top off the defense, you know, uh, when all of the other attention is being paid to those other guys. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's kind of where I am, right? Demir Bird, I uh, appreciate your service, sir. And Kayla McGarry, I appreciate your service, sir. <laughs> But you gotta go. You don't, you, have to, go. you don't have to go home, but you gotta get up out of here. Get up out of here. I get it. That is fair. So no, you know what? I'm gonna leave it there because as I look, you know, kind of at the the O line, and really I have to say the O line because I can't disagree with you on Demir Bird, right? Right. Um, and I think the tight end room is solid enough because as long as you get tight end one back, we're good next year. Right. 
No, I'm okay because I feel like, you know, when you look at Parker Hesse, my cold crew, they give you what you need here and there to move the chains. And they're also pretty good blockers. So mm -hmm. you're okay. So really it just goes down to the O-line. And one of the things I will agree with you on is this, and that's something that, that uh, Terry Fontenot has to ask himself. When you look at those top right tackles that might be available in free agency, I mean, can you even afford them if their teams actually decide to, you know, retain them, if you will, or allow them to go into free agency, whatever the case may be. And is there a right tackle in the third or fourth round? Because you can't take my first and second round picks for a right tackle. Anywho, we will keep this conversation going tomorrow. We're going to flip it on to the defensive side. And that's going to be an interesting conversation to see who oh, yeah. you think, especially when you think about the fact that Jarvis is a former D lineman himself. He's looks at the defense a little bit different than most of us. So I can't wait to see what he has to talk about tomorrow on that and come back and check us out for that. But in the meantime, as I always tell you guys, Jarvis and I, we're your friends and we don't want you stressed out, not even for a Hawks game against the Nets tonight. So if it gets stressful, go ahead and go to built.com and order yourself built bars. That way for whatever happens after that game and in games beyond, if it doesn't work out in Hawks favor, you're okay because there are some really cool puffs that you can eat there. 100% chocolate, 160 grams of fat, not a bad deal, calories rather, not a bad deal for you, especially if you think about every pound that people have put on during this holiday season. And of course you also get 15 grams of protein, which is an absolutely good look and it's easily soluble. So that way it goes through your system and actually gives you a quick punch that you need. So go to built.com, Plug in locked on 15. That is your discount code for your first order to get 15% off. And they may not be able to be your stocking stuffers anymore because we are past Christmas, but certainly maybe this will be a part of somebody's New Year's resolution gift bag. Again, it's built.com. Locked on 15 is your code. Get yourself 15% off on that first order.